Good morning. I hope you're all feeling well. Here we are on day five, fasting and feasting. It starts with Jeremiah 15, 16. Your words were found and I ate them and your words became to me a joy and the delight of my heart. So this chapter is all about us getting back into our word, our Bibles, and feasting on that. And um, she starts the chapter with talking about how um, she was prompted one day to pull out um, uh, a cake platter and put her Bible on it to encourage her to go to it and read it and take it in like sweet um, dessert, basically. And so she goes on to talk more about this throughout. So fasting from sugar and feasting on God's words became the theme of my afternoons and evenings, any time of the day or night that my stomach would growl again. So as she kept her Bible out on that cake platter, she'd keep going to it every time she felt herself, you know, craving something and food wise. Um, going on here later, it says, We are crowding out sugar with the satisfying sweetness of Christ. And the main way we are doing that is by ingesting his word. So this word is crucial. You know, it's absolutely crucial to satisfying us. Each time I fast from food, I rediscover that Christ truly is as sweet as honey in my mouth. Unfortunately, after some time has passed, the flavor fades and the things of this world attempt to crowd him out again. That's why I fast for 40 days a few times each year. It's not that I want to live a fasting life, it's that I need to live a feasting life. Each time I forget to feast, I fast in order to remember. So when she's talking about feasting there, she's talking about feasting on God's word and how if you find yourself getting away from that place to a place of really feasting on God's word, then it's a good time to fast and remember how sweet and good his word is and really refocus. And I know I've needed that right now. Um, there was a time in my life, um, well, seasons off and on, but I mean, um, I remember one season particularly, I was so in my word. I mean, and I had Bibles all over my house. I had one in my bathroom and um, just all over the house so that anytime I felt the urge or needed something, I could just pick it up and grab it. And it drastically changed my life and perspective. And I need to be in that place again. I've been slacking a bit in that. So that's what I'm going to do. I'm going to start, I'm going to take um, multiple Bibles, set them in different places around my house. Um, then she goes on in here to talk about how, you know, sometimes there's snack words, then there's dessert words, then there's full on meals, you know, and we need all of those to survive. Um, we can't just go in here and grab one quick verse out of context all the time. It works sometimes. It's good sometimes as little snacks to meditate on or carry throughout our day or as little desserts that are maybe something that reminds us of a God's promise or sweetness or goodness to us. That's a dessert verse. Um, but we need to really get in and dig in to get those good meals where we're understanding fully in context something God wants to speak to us. And, um so she just kind of goes over some of that, and she says, well, no, I don't want to read that whole passage. Let's see. Um, oh, I really liked this. I highlighted this. I thought this was good. She says, if praying is talking to God, then reading God's word is listening. I think it's something we technically know, but if we can really let that hit home today, if praying is us talking to God, then reading God's word is us listening. You know, sometimes we're praying and we're seeking these answers when they're right here in his word. He's already given them. You know, or sometimes the answer is we don't need an answer. We just need to trust. Um, I know for me today, I asked the Lord to give me 
um, some breakfast in his word, right? And, um, of course, went again here to Matthew 6, where he's talking about do not worry, you know, do not worry about today or um, take no thought for your life, what you shall eat or what you shall drink, nor yet for your body, what you shall put on. Is not the life more than meat and the body than raiment? Behold the fowls of the air, for they sow not, neither do they reap, nor gather into barns. Yet your heavenly Father feedeth them. Are you not much better than they? Which of you, by taking thought, can add one cubit unto his stature? And why take you thought for raiment? Consider Consider the lilies of the field, how they grow, how they toil not, neither do they spin. And yet I say unto you that even Solomon in all of his glory was not arrayed like one of these. Wherefore, if God so clothed the grass of the field, which today is and tomorrow is cast into the oven, shall he not much more clothe you, O you of little faith? Therefore take no thought, saying, What shall we eat, or what shall we drink, or wherewithal shall we be clothed? For after all these things do the Gentiles seek. For your heavenly Father knoweth that ye have need of all these things. But seek ye first the kingdom of God and his righteousness, and all these things shall be added unto you. Take therefore no thought for the morrow, for the morrow shall take thought for the things of itself. Sufficient unto the day is the evil thereof. All right, so um, that's kind of one I'm sure we've probably all heard so many times. Uh, but yeah, how many times do we need reminded of it? And uh, lately I've just been so caught up in um, trying to over plan for tomorrow. Over plan for tomorrow. And, and um, we're going to be moving and I want to buy all the stuff now for tomorrow. And um, when I could just wait just seek first the kingdom of God and let him maybe he wants to bless me with better things than I'm out here trying to buy um, and I'm racking up the bills when we don't have all that extra money when I could just wait upon the Lord and I could just trust him that he'll make everything beautiful in his time in his way one day at a time sufficient today there's going to be problems that arise today hopefully no big ones for us but there will be things of today and if we're so focused out there on tomorrow we can't even handle what comes today so just let God be with you today um, be your strength today even in the sugar fast don't get caught up um, in the 35 days to come just focus on today and um, listen to him today. So keep your Bible open on your kitchen counter. I'm reading again here. <laughs> my, keep your Bible open on your kitchen counter, my fasting friend, on a cake stand, or open up, or open on top of your recipe books. Write down the verses that you read. And write them out on an index card or a recipe card. And carry them with you to snack on. Um, going down, sugar offers you empty calories, but Christ's word is sustenance.